Welcome back to Mastering Rogue Legacy with Brian. And today we have Sir Seller, who's a Barbarian King. And with the particular build I have, we still have 5 hit points per kill and 1 magic point per kill. And as a Barbarian, we of course have the Barbarian Shout, as well as we have Scythe as our spell. And we had a bunch of money last run, and so we have kind of improved our strength and improved our armor. And so this guy has a lot of capabilities. He's starting out with 458 hit points. And my goal... Oh, and we have Sharon Zobel, so we get to hold on to our 1,000 gold that we couldn't spend on anything else. That's nice. My main goal for this character is to defeat the Maya boss, Ponce de Leon. Which is... I don't know if it's interesting or appropriate or something. I was going and re-watching, so I'm going to head upwards towards the Maya. I was re-watching Alex Diener has a playthrough of Rogue Legacy. And he is insanely good at avoiding damage in this game. Uh, infuriatingly good, honestly. And so he... Am I clumsy? Okay, no, I can stand on this one case. I thought baldness was the only... Oh, whoa, characteristic. Genetic characteristic of this particular hero. Sir Seller. In Alex's playthrough in episode 4... <laughs> I think this is going to be like episode like 17 or something. In episode 4 uh, of his Rogue Legacy playthrough, he manages to defeat Ponce de Leon, the boss that I'm going to go after today. And he does it without taking any damage at all. <laughs> and so I was just re-watching that episode like just a few minutes ago. I was like, gosh darn it, he was a level 37, I'm at level 91. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you're really, if you've got really fast reflexes and you're really good at dodging, um, yeah, those are incredible assets. And so as a result, there's almost, I mean, like I said, I think I've talked about it a couple times before, like I've seen people who, you know, defeat the first couple of bosses, like with the first character, without buying any upgrades at all. All right, we're gonna peek into this room. Oh, fairy chest take no damage. I have the sky rune, and I move reasonably slowly, so I believe I can do this. Yes, great. Grace rune sword, I will take it. And then I think I need to. Darn it, okay, took a little bit of damage. With only five points of vampirism, it'll take a little bit, a little while longer in order to kind of bring my hit points back up, and so that's another reason. I wanna head to the boss first with this character, so that I can take on the boss with kind of maximum hit points. Oh, that helped a lot. Hooray for the chicken leg. And... Ooh, I guess the Maya's gonna be over to the right. Okay, fair enough. I want to get to Ponce de Leon kind of with maximum hit points with this character, and then after I've taken out the boss, then we can go explore other areas. And my hunch is my hit points will kind of be whittled down over time. But of course, the Barbarian, uh, one of his main advantages as a character class, uh, is that he's got a huge hit point pool, and so we're starting out with 458 hit points here. And so that should definitely work in our favor. Coupled with the Barbarian Shout, which I mentioned in the previous episode, is very useful against this boss that I want to go fight. Uh, but for right now, the castle seems pretty tame. Uh, we'll come back to these rooms. And so I'll make a cut here and see you guys when I reach the Maya. Here is the entrance to the Maya. Oh boy, that is not an easy room to start out with in the Maya. But if I can take one of these guys out, then yeah, each guy you manage to take out. Yikes! Makes the rest of them easier, as usual. And there's only one enemy to fight in this game. It's usually pretty straightforward. When there's multiple at a time coming at you from different directions, that's when things get dodgy. All right, we're gonna peek into. Ooh, great. Let's definitely pray for assistance and hope for something good. Oh no! The Hedgehog's Curse. That is not good. We're gonna keep on peeking around into a lot of different rooms and see if we can find a second place to pray for assistance to possibly get rid of the Hedgehog's Curse now. In case you've forgotten. Oh boy. Hmm. Alright, I really want to find the boss room, so I think I'll focus on that. Uh, the Hedgehog's Curse causes you to drop, yeah, there we go, a significant number of your gold coins each time you get hit. And I always go and pick them back up. 
I believe at some point in the past, in one of the previous updates to Rogue Legacy, uh, if you had bounty, um, it caused your coins to be worth more, you could actually kind of gain money as a result of using the Hedgehog's Curse. Uh, but I think in one of the updates they decided that was a bug and fixed it. So I think it's no longer the case. But you might hear some people saying that in some other Rogue Leg Legacy videos, but I think I've tested it out recently or gone back and rewatched videos where I had Hedgehog's Curse, tried to count up the gold and do the math to kind of check it out. All right, I'm just kind of peeking into all the rooms because I really want to find the boss room early. Let's see. I don't usually like rooms with the spikes on the floor, but ooh, and then with that guy too. Yeah, let's get out of here. What was in this room again? This room won't be bad to go up through, because it's only this guy. Oh, crap! Darn it. <laughs> Alright, now that he's out of the way, these other guys I could just hit through the floor. So I can just go, whee! <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Bing! Great, and I'll do the same to you. Ouch. Actually, now I can just hit you. In your shield in the front, you crazy Hulk guard. And continue to explore the Maya. And yeah, so long as there aren't, yeah, actually spikes on the floor, I should definitely avoid, because that's one of the few places. I was gonna say, so long as there aren't spikes on the floor, even if I do drop money as a result of the Hedgehog's Curse, I should be able to pick it back up. Spikes on the floor, one of the rare assumptions, because the money falls on spikes. Then I'll pretty much be out of luck. All right, I want to hit you, but you're going to take multiple hits to kill. There we go. All right, I think I'm far enough out of range that the pupil below will no longer be shooting at me, so we'll go ahead and finish off the top half of this room and go back to the bottom half, where I may have still dropped some coins I haven't picked up. Yep, there are plenty right here. We'll get the rest of the coins on the way back out. Let's go ahead and finish off the enemies. If I don't make any more mistakes, I can try to start earning some hit points back again, because down to... 406, does that say? 458? I haven't been using my spell at all. That's another thing I need to do. Alright. Pretty happy with the fact that I managed to take out the Worgen without letting him hit me. Let's get the rest of the money in here. And let's peek into all these rooms until we find the boss. Okay, that's a dead end room with the chest. Is the boss up here? Nope. Halfus and Bereth. I really don't need gear out of the Maya right now, I don't think, so let's skip them as well, since I'm, once again, likely to lose hit points in that room, I expect. And so we will continue... Oh, I thought there was a way to go right in this room. It's further over that I need to go right, apparently. Yeah, if I go down and then right. Right, this is the room with all the spikes on the ground, though. Hmm. Can I kill this guy without him killing me? Oops. Oh, no. I lost a bunch of money right there. All right, if I get you right here and then dodge. Oh, boy. Nope. Bad, 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 bad. Do not like you. Crap. <laughs> all right. Well, so much for getting any gold this run. <laughs> it's all sitting on the floor down there. I've lost a fair number of hit points, too. This is not good. Ouch, ouch, ouch. All right. While I was invulnerable on the ground, I decided I was going to pick up some of the coins I dropped. Yuck. Alright, but hopefully we'll find the boss room over here somewhere. Fairy chest to feed all enemies. Well, alright. We can always back up into the castle to try to regain some hit points later. So let's go ahead and try to move forward over here, and because the boss has got to be somewhere to the right. So let's see if we can also... Oh, boy. What is the best way to take on this room? I think step one is probably to separate that ice and... Okay, actually... Ah, oh, darn it. Oh, and there's the four spikes on the bottom, too. Crap, 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 crap. <laughs> All right. Now is the portion of time. Oh, man, I'm going to die. I'm going to completely blow it with this character. Darn it. All right, quit walking into bad guys' projectiles. There's a mimic running around. There he is. Crap. Okay, I'm trying to concentrate. Take my time. It's not working. It's not helping. Yuck. One bad room destroys the whole run. I'm about to die. Yep. Poop. That was awful. I'm sorry that you guys had to see that. Let's just move on. 
We have an assassin, an archmage, and a barbarian king. Hypergonadism knocks enemies back. And the axe is a spell that I like for Ponce de Leon. So let's try to do the same thing again. Let's try to go find the boss. I think I got a little unlucky there. I don't have enough gold to buy anything. Ah, and yeah, we'll just go try it again. The castle will be straightforward, so I'll go ahead and make a cut here right at the beginning, and I'll see you when I see you. There's a fairy chest take no damage room here, and I really like fairy chests. And so let's see if we can manage to do it. I'm not particularly good at this take no damage room. Uh, based on prior experience, ah, darn it, all right. And I failed it once again. Uh, but I always like to give a shot at fairy chests. Oh, speaking of fairy chests, Okay, I have very slow movement speed here, but I do have the Sky Rune, which might be enough to save me. Let's give this one a shot as well. So if I jump up here, go here, I think I can actually circle around right there. Ah, but the Sky Chest wasn't enough to lift me up high enough. Or I didn't activate it quickly enough or something. Alright, so we failed at two Fairy Chest rooms. Yeah, maybe today is just not going to be my day with, with Barbarians trying to do the things I want them to do. Oh, there's Halfus and Bereth again. That'll just be worth gold. It's kind of a distraction right now. I'm focused on getting to the Maya. I'm gonna keep keep my focus. Uh, the castle will be easy, so I will see you get them. <laughs> the moment I say the castle will be easy, I take silly damage from Asharite. I'll see you guys when I see you. Here is the entrance to the Maya once again. I have the perfect weapon to take this guy out. Oh, interesting. And my extra knockback applies to my magic damage attacks as well. Balance room, chest plate. Okay, great. Let's try to make fewer mistakes. That is a mimic up there. Uh, but with extra knockback, I should have no problem holding this guy off. And a guard box. Yo, boy! That's also a mimic. Alright, so there's a scout or a pupil or something that was shooting at me in the top right. I guess it's a pupil. But if he's the last of the enemies, then this shouldn't be a big problem. Because I can do that. Okay. And we have a bunch of different directions we can go. We're going to take a peek into all the rooms. Both in order to try to find the boss as well as... Crap. I went for one coin and ended up taking some damage as a result. Gonna go into all the rooms, I was going to say, in order to try to find the boss, as well as any useful bonuses, such as pray for assistant statues and whatnot. Uh, but when the rooms are dead ends, then I tend to clear them out so I don't forget to come back to them in the future. Uh, but if the rooms extend further in different directions... Darn it. Then... Oh, hey! Guardian Bracers. That doesn't suck. And then I'll leave them off and continue looking in all the different rooms. So, where do we still need to go? Up and up left. And I don't mind the fact that my hit points are at maximum, because once we do find the boss room, then we can simply teleport back into the castle, fight some easy guys, and through vampirism and whatnot, I should be able to get my hit points back up so that then we'll be actually able, ready and willing, to fight the boss. And let's see, I've got 100 magic, but I've only got a little bit of siphon. So unless I really need the magic... I'm going to try not to spend any of my magic and save it up for the boss. You shouldn't be too bad, but I'm worried. I guess the Spikator is the second enemy in this room. Usually this room layout has two enemies in it. And there we go. Magic daggers, I think... I think I prefer using my axe against the boss, but I might switch to magic daggers later after we defeat the boss, assuming we manage to do so. I have high hopes despite my earlier failure. Okay, here is the boss room. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to teleport back to the castle. I'm going to fight around in the castle a little bit and see if I can get my hit points back up. And then we'll come back in here, but before we do, 
we're gonna follow Brian's new rules, which are always peek into the various rooms, just in case there's something awesome that you want to get. But there is not, so I'll go back to the castle. And yeah, the castle should be straightforward, so hopefully when I see you, I will have more hit points. After only a couple rooms of the castle, I'm already back up to maximum hit points. And so, let's go ahead and try to take on this boss. So basically, he's going to be a giant fireball, who's going to leave around other fireballs. There's going to be some spiky balls in the room. But mostly, this is a guy that's just like, dodge, hit him, dodge, hit him. And in order to avoid the extra fireballs that he leaves behind, that's why we're a barbarian king, because we have a shout where I can do that and cause all the other fireballs to disperse. And so, if I take my time and just avoid damage from this guy and from the spiky balls in the room, I should be good. And it wouldn't be bad to hit him with an axe every so often as well. Although, yeah, I'm gonna need my shout in order to disperse the fireballs, and that takes mana as well. So let's be careful about my mana pool. I'm having a difficult time getting right to the range to where I can hit him, but not have him hit me. Yo, boy! Alright, so the good news is I have a big hit point pool. The bad news is, so does he. He's a boss. Wouldn't expect any less. Crap! Ouch! And I don't have much speed. I should definitely use the dash more often. That would be a good idea. Let's go ahead and disperse the fireballs really quick to give me more movement possibilities, but I do kind of like going in a circle. Yo, boy. Spiky balls, spiky balls! Darn it! Wow. Does it only disperse the ones that are on the screen? I think that's actually the case. I thought it dispersed all of them in the room. Oh, I'm out of mana! Oh, no! Now I'm in a lot of trouble, because I have to find a way to dodge through these things. Oh, dear. I did not realize just how much mana the Barbarian Shout takes. Apparently, it is a non-trivial amount of mana. And I've gone through it all. I've wasted it. I fear that this run is going to end in failure. But I'm going to stay on task and do my best. Try to kite this guy around the room. To keep the fireballs spread out. Find the opportune moments to run over and hit this guy in the face with the sword. Oh my gosh. All right, well the job I'm doing right at this very moment is enough to make me kind of happy even if I do end up losing this fight. I'll at least feel like I put up a good fight. Oh gosh. But yeah, movement speed. I've forgotten just how important movement speed is in this. And it's very hard for me to get away very quickly. I really should have invested in a haste rune. So I think that's one of the key lessons from this fight. Okay, I've got like three hit points left. Yuck. Alright, let's try not to die. Nope! Nope! We're dead. Poop! Ah, well I learned a few things about that fight. A, haste really is important. B, the barbarian shout isn't nearly as effective as I thought it was going to be. Um, and see, a little bit more attack up would have helped because I got him pretty low. And if I were hitting him for more hit points each time, that would have helped. Hmm, who do we want next? Ooh, let's check out a Lich Queen for the first time with Crowstorm and the One. So, Lich King and Queen is a very interesting, unusual class we will talk about in a moment. Not particularly strong. Let's take a look at the stats, actually. Strength, intelligence, critical chance, and damage. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what the numbers were on other characters, so maybe looking at the stats isn't all that helpful. Uh, not particularly good all-around stats, and also starts with a low uh, hit point and magic pool, but they can increase over time, and so that's kind of like the key the key thing about the Lich. Did I find some new equipment here? Guardian Limbs. Less magic, more armor for more weight. 
So that's a possibility. I definitely wouldn't mind more armor. And we're down to just like, I don't know, a dozen uh, runes that we still need to get as well. So that's nice. Let me think about how I want to equip this character for a moment. Okay, I elected to switch to those guardian limbs. We have Crow Storm as our spell, which causes one crow per enemy to appear on the screen and home in on them. It's a very powerful spell in rooms with large numbers of enemies. And our special ability is something that I can't show off yet. It basically converts maximum hit points into maximum magic points. But we need to build up our maximum hit points first. And the way that we build them up, first off, we're the one, which causes everything to be this purple-blue color. Look kind of crazy. Uh, but the way that we increase our maximum uh, hit points is by killing guys. And so I just gained four maximum hit points. Currently my max is 111. Oops. Now it's 115. And so as I kill guys, I will build up more maximum hit points. And eventually, ooh, fairy chests defeat all enemies. Crow Storm is a great spell because the crows will home in and defeat all enemies. Nice, very expensive spell but we'll be able to use this crazy conversion in order to get more maximum magic points in the not-too-distant future, hopefully. So let's see. This is a reasonably big room. Can't decide if it has enough enemies. We're in the castle. It's probably not worth using a crow storm just yet. These enemies will be fairly straightforward to deal with. Just using normal attacks of this character. But yeah, we've already built our way up to 147 hit points. There is a cap. You can't just keep building hit points by killing more and more enemies. There is a point where it maxes out. But once that happens, then you can convert half of your hit points into extra maximum magic points. And then kind of like the cycle repeats. And so you can do that one or two, or as you get further up in levels and have higher maximums maybe three times, and get an extremely powerful character by the end of things. However, because this character starts with such a low hit point pool right at the beginning and is a pretty weak character, until you've built some strength up and some mana up, ouch, uh, it can be a very difficult character to manage kind of early in the game, which is why I wait to unlock this particular character class. All right, but we're going to do some exploring around the castle. We're going to keep an eye out and make sure that we keep gaining maximum hit points as we're killing guys. Because whenever that stops, uh, that's time then to convert once you've reached the cap. If you're not going to gain any more maximum magic points, sorry, any more maximum hit points, then you might as well convert them to magic points and start the cycle once again. I'm going to work my way to the right, over to the forest, because we're going to have to kill plenty of bad guys. And so the castle and the forest are the two areas that I want to focus on for bad guys that'll be easy to kill. And so far, I'm doing an okay job in this area. Hey, there's a jukebox. Not really in the mood to switch the music right now. We'll probably be entering the forest soon. And the music automatically switches, even if you change it with the jukebox. Each time you enter a new zone. Let's see. I want to peek in all the rooms. We said that, that was a strategy, and so that's a strategy I'm going to keep. This is... It's still got a... Uh, an unlocked chest in that room. Okay, here's the boss room. So we'll go ahead and grab the money out of here. Peek into some other rooms beyond. Okay, this is a dead end room with no chest, so I'll go ahead and finish this room off. Basically the challenge, the trade-off, my old strategy was to always finish all the enemies in each room that I entered. And as a result, if the minimap showed that room, uh, then that means I've already completed that room. My new goal is to remember which rooms I've completed based on if there's kind of other rooms coming out of them on the minimap. Uh, and so I'm leaving behind rooms that I've already explored on the minimap, provided they still have other exits. And so the other exits will make me come back and as a result be able to finish off the room. I don't know how well I'm describing this. The point is I'm trying to mark 
uh, in one way or another, the rooms that I need to come back to on the minimap based on what's contained in those rooms or whether those rooms still have unexplored exits. Alright, but the castle's turning out to be pretty easy for this lich, and we're up to 275 hit points. I think we started with like 110 or something. Uh, so that is a nice advantage. Let's see. Fairy chests take no damage. Can I do this room? If I'm careful, I might be able to. Darn it. <laughs> or maybe not. Let's see. Sadly, it looks like the forest is going to be through this room with all the floor spikes. I do not like this room, but what you going to do? Darn it. Let's go ahead and take that guy out in case I need to come back here, and that's a bad guy as well. Yuck. <laughs> Took a fair bit of damage there. Good news is, this guy has a bunch of hit points now. And our hit points continue to increase. Okay, here is the entrance to the forest. The forest looks like this when you are the one. In general, kind of all the areas have a very similar look. When you have that crazy characteristic of being the one. Presumably some kind of matrix pop culture implications here. Although it doesn't look particularly matrixy. It's got kind of a blue purple thing going on, whereas the matrix is always kind of like green. But I still think it looks cool. I kind of like characters with a straight, honestly. Oops! I took a fireball to the face! To the face! Okay, we are no longer gaining maximum ma uh, maximum hit points. And so now I'm going to use my special ability. And so if I press the special button, my hit points get cut in half and my magic point goes up by that number. And so I threw away 151 max hit points in order to get 151 magic points. Which is great, because I have a super awesome spell. And so now, I can go back to... Okay, oops, oh, I just converted again. I didn't mean to do that. Yuck. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. I meant to use Crow Storm there. Now I've only got 76 hit points, and so now I need to be very careful. Let's, in fact, let's go back to the castle and find some more easy rooms to kill, guys. To build up my hit points once again. Yeah, one of the most dangerous things, well, definitely the most dangerous for me, of using this particular character class is the fact that I have a tendency to hit the wrong button. Probably had more than one episode of of this game or other games that are entitled Wrong Button on my YouTube channel. Because it is a mistake that I am prone to making. So we just need to kill a bunch of bad guys. Okay, there's the entrance to the dungeon. We're not going in there. Kill a bunch of bad guys, build my hit points back up. And then when I feel a little bit more confident, we can head back over into the forest. And then places beyond. Oh, man. All right, I have to teleport back. I don't want to do that room again. I'll just screw it up. Fairy chest, no jumping. I'm pretty sure in this room, you go second from the left. And then all the way over to the side. However, since I have the sky rune, if I do make a mistake, I can still recover from it. So yes, here indeed is the location of the fairy chests. Um, and so, grace rune. But if I did fall down an area that I didn't want to, I can always use the sky rune to come back up. And it doesn't count as a jump. And so that's another place where the sky rune has benefits that other runes do not. So once again, I'm a big fan of the sky rune. There's a fair number of enemies in here and I have a ton of magic points. And so I'm going to use crow storm to just kill or Almost kill. I guess the Grey Knights have just enough hit points they manage to live. All the enemies like that. But yeah, eventually I'll find a room with a whole lot of enemies in it, and then we'll use Crow Storm, and we'll see just how powerful a spell it is. This room that I left behind, unexplored, in the castle, with the treasure chest in it, is just the type of room I need right now in order to improve my... Maximum hit points, because there's a number of easy enemies in here. And so that is a good way to gain some hit points back. And at this point, I think I've explored actually most of the castle. And so we'll definitely spend some time in the forest, but I also want to take a peek up into the Maya as well. 
Because as I'm gaining some hit points back here, this character will start getting reasonably strong and should be able to take on some of the Maya as well. Assuming that he has a better guy steering him than whoever was driving the barbarians that we saw earlier this episode. Ahem. Cough, cough. <laughs> All right, here we are in the Maya. Let's see. I did hit that guy, okay. For a minute, I thought I missed him completely. But then I saw his health bar had gone way down. Okay, so most of the guys here will probably be two and three hit kills, which isn't too bad. Could definitely still use some more attack power to get guys down to one hit kills in the Maya. The difference between a one hit kill enemy and a two hit kill enemy, this is a uh, mimic, by the way. You can see him shaking, and you can see that there wasn't an orange chest on the minimap. The difference between a one-hit kill and a two-hit kill is actually, I find, enormous in this game. This guy, for example. Oh boy, he's a three-hit. Okay. But yeah, if you can, for example, activate and kill a Doom Trit in one action before they get a chance to start flying around and shooting you, uh, that is a big boon. Compared to... Ooh! I got kind of caught on the wall geometry there. That was pretty weird. Okay, and now I'm taking a bunch of damage all of a sudden. Let's not do that. This game does have a number of minor bugs with collision detection and, yeah, things. They're mostly pretty minor, but at the same time, after playing things like Spelunky, where the controls are just 100% polished and perfect, uh, playing this game, you will notice some of the differences. Yeah, I think there's a fair number of enemies in this room, actually. This might be a difficult room. I wonder if I should use Crow Storm in here. I'm up to max mana. Let me go ahead and use it. We'll go seek out the enemies. There could be... Okay, there's no Doom Trits. Basically, I wanted to make sure that all of a sudden there was going to be a painting flying at me from other ends of the room. If there was, it was going to wait here for him to come to me. But now... Oops. It's going to say that I've softened up some of these guys by already giving them a hit. Hopefully there'll be one-hit kills, but sadly the Mimic was not. Okay. Get him to fire upwards. And then I will go dodge. Yeah, you throw your little thing. There we go. Yeah, and definitely having Crow Storm to have weakened these guys beforehand. It's helping out. Oh my goodness, this guy has heat-seeking missiles or whatever. Crazy guy. Guard box 2000, is that what he's called? Ranger Sword, I see the projectile coming at me. And so I will dodge it. Take that, Corrupt Vanguard, is that what you're called? If I can manage to hit you, yes, Corrupt Vanguard. Alright, well this is turning out to be reasonably profitable. We're up to 4,000 already. A little low on hit points. Uh, my magic points are all the way back up. This is another big room. So let's actually cast two Crow Storms. In order to hit a bunch of guys. Oh boy, let's use another one. There's still a bunch of guys in this room. There we go. Third Crow Storm managed to take out the painting who was chasing me. As well as possibly the pyrite, or did I hit him with my sword? I'm not sure. But yeah, super useful spell in big rooms. Okay, I guess it brought this guy down to a one-hit kill. And on top of that, since I have a little bit of siphon, like I actually gain some magic points back with each kill, uh, and so as a result of that, this is a real chest. If you use Crow Storm in a big room, and you have a character with a lot of Siphon, uh, you can, you know, cost 37 magic points or whatever it's currently costing me to cast, but you might earn a fair number of magic right back if your spell ends up killing a bunch of enemies in that room. If you have a bunch of Siphon equipped, I'm only gaining one per kill, and so... It's still gonna take me a while to work my magic points back up. Ooh, and I see this guy sneaking up on me over here. So let's carefully finish him off. This is a real chest. Alright, and in terms of hit points, I'm back up near maximum, so that is pretty happy. Oh! And then I did something very foolish right at the end. And all the guys in here hit pretty hard, and so that's an easy way to lose a bunch of hit points. Is to accidentally fly into a bad guy. Hmm, I'm gonna use Crow Storm in this room as well. 
Yeah, I'll use it at least twice. Because there's a bunch of bad guys. And now this room will become much more manageable, hopefully. Yeah, we've already killed a few guys. Got a few other guys who are down to one and two hit kills. And it looks like there might be a chest with some equipment over there. So I'm going to try to head over there. I'm going to take my time. Patience is a virtue in this game. Peel off one enemy at a time. That is a route to success. Alright, I wanted to get a spiky ball in the wall, but at least I got a spiky ball flying around a portion of this room that I'm not currently in, so it's unlikely to hit me. Hey, I was right! Ranger cape! It was a piece of equipment. That is very happy. And let's peek into some more rooms. Ooh, let's be careful with that spiky ball. Hey, it's the boss! How would this guy do against the boss?